Hey guys! Today we're going to be talking about the African diaspora in Venezuela. Freedom In the 2011 national census, less than 4% of Venezuelans self-identified as Afro-Venezuelan, putting the population at just over 1 million. However, other sources estimate that at least 3 million Venezuelans have African ancestry. The largest Afro-Venezuelan population can be found in the region of Barlovento, 100 kilometers to the east of the capital, Caracas. There are also Afro-Venezuelan communities along the coast of Carabobo, the Distrito Federal, Aragua and the southern eastern shore of Lake Maracaibo. Enslaved Africans began arriving in Venezuela in significant numbers in the 1500s as the Spanish monarchy began to expand its empire across Latin America. In total, approximately 100,000 enslaved Africans were brought to Venezuela. They were referred to as Piesa de India and treated as products rather than people. During the 16th century, enslaved Africans worked in the gold mines in Coro and Yaracuy and did fishing and pearl diving in Isla Margarita and Cumaná. In the 18th century, they were brought to Barlovento to assist the cacao industry, as well as on sugar plantations in Lera, Aragua, Zulia and Lake Maracaibo. Slave rebellions in Venezuela were recorded from as early as the 1530s. However, the biggest revolt in Venezuela took place in 1552, led by the Puerto Rican-born Miguel de Buria, also known as El Negro Miguel, who formed a settlement of runaway slaves known as a Cimarón or a Cumbe. He reigned with his wife, Guillomar, whom he declared queen, and his son as prince, until their kingdom was attacked and reclaimed by Spanish forces. One of the most famous black uprisings in Venezuela took place in 1795 in Coro, led by the free man José Leonardo Chirino. The rebellion was suppressed, Chirino was executed and his children sold into slavery. However, Chirino has gone down in Venezuelan folklore as a symbol of slave resistance. Nowadays, there is an airport named after him and the annual celebration of Afro-Venezuelan Day is celebrated on May the 10th to commemorate the date his insurrection began. By the 18th century, there were 20 to 30,000 runaway slaves in Venezuela and approximately 60,000 working in plantations. Afro-Venezuelans played an important role in Venezuela's fight for independence. If you haven't heard of him, Simón Bolívar was a revolutionary leader who was hailed with liberating five South American countries from Spanish colonial rule. Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Bolivia and Venezuela. Recognizing the military value of the enslaved workforce, Simón Bolívar declared the abolition of slavery, first in 1812 and then again in 1816. However, slavery was not abolished in practice in Venezuela until 1854. The most famous Afro-Venezuelan independence fighter was Pedro Camejo, also known as El Negro Primero, or in English, the black man who goes first, because he was reportedly always the first to ride into battle. He was famously killed in action in 1821 in the Second Battle of Carabobo, which eventually led to Venezuela's independence. Today, Pedro Camejo is a national symbol of bravery and resistance, and there is a statue of him in Plaza Carabobo in the Venezuelan capital, Caracas. In 1821, the law of the womb was passed, stating that all children born to slaves would be born free. Slavery was officially abolished in Venezuela in 1854 under the Venezuelan president, General José Gregorio Monagas. Even though slavery has been abolished in Venezuela for almost 200 years, racist attitudes continue to hold back the Afro-Venezuelan population. Black intellectuals that countered this trend include Juan Pablo Sojo and Manuel Rodriguez Cárdenas, who went to great lengths to study, document and celebrate Afro-Venezuelan history and culture. In 2004, former President Hugo Chávez created the Presidential Commission Against Racial Discrimination. The following year, Afro-Venezuelan activists proposed celebrating the 10th of May as Afro-Venezuelan Day to coincide with the African insurrection led by the black free man José Leonardo Chirino. Afro-Venezuelan Day is celebrated every May 10th across the country with music and dance performances by the Afro-Venezuelan community. In 2012, the National Council for the Development of Afro-Descendant Communities in Venezuela was formed, also known as CONADEC AFRO. The institution works to advocate political, economic and social rights for black Venezuelans and they were involved in passing the Law Against Racial Discrimination in Venezuela. There are clear African influences still present in Venezuelan culture today. 
Most Afro-Venezuelans are Roman Catholic by faith, and one of the most important Catholic festivals for the Afro-Venezuelan community is the Festival of San Bautista, celebrated on June the 24th. Following the Cuban Revolution in 1959, the influx of Cuban migrants to Venezuela introduced the African-derived belief system Santeria to Venezuela and is practiced to this day. Another tradition that speaks to Venezuela's African heritage is the Dancing Devils of Corpus Christi, a religious festival which celebrates the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. It's celebrated across the country by 11 different sects or brotherhoods, of which the most famous are the Dancing Devils of Yare and the Dancing Devils of Chuao. It's traditional for all these sects to dress up in devil costumes and dance, and in doing so pledge their devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. An important feature of Afro-Venezuelan music is the drums, a tradition brought to Venezuela by enslaved Africans. In Barlovento, the quitiplas are widely used. They are a percussive instrument made from bamboo sticks. Along the central coastal region of Venezuela, the tambor style of music and dance is popular. As well as being the name of the genre, tambor also literally means drums in Spanish. Famous Afro-Venezuelans include the salsa singer and legend Oscar de Leon, supermodel Inet Stevens, opera singer Morea Muñoz, Magdalena Sanchez, the queen of Venezuelan song, singer and rapper Micro TDH, rapper a cappella and Aristobulo Isturiz, who became vice president of the Constituent Assembly of Venezuela in 2017. That brings us to the end of our video on the African diaspora in Venezuela. For more great content on black communities worldwide, be sure to have a look at the other videos on my channel. And for a daily dose of black history, follow me on Instagram at Freedom Is Mine Official. I'll see you in the next video. Freedom is mine.